Say go. Big House here. I have to apologize for this story, but it goes back to that saying that I was telling you before. Is you sh what you should learn is how to do what should be done when it should be done. This is one of the cases that bit me in the behind. I ran into a an Indian or a native, and uh, he told me this story, but he was too sickly at the time to have me interview and record it. So I said, well, let me get back to you, and uh, we'll record it. I've got to record this story. Well, when I returned in about two years, the uh, man that I wanted to interview had passed, and I never captured this story. But I felt it should be given to you in this documentary. So, please excuse me. Um, I did not get a chance to interview him in time. It's my fault. I procrastinated just a little bit too long. This, this story takes place over a 100 years ago. And there was an Indian nation who lived amongst the islands in the St. Lawrence River. And the chief of the tribe had a fairly large family, but one of his youngest daughters, who was 13 years old, was the most gorgeous woman on the entire planet. Now, as you know, uh, the rumor is true that Indian or Native American uh, females that are very young are absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. She was the most beautiful uh, young girl you'd ever seen in your life. And as they grow older, they get a little bit durable. So, uh, I won't go into that. Anyway, it seems that at 13 years old, she, uh, her dad was approached, the chief of the tribe was approached by a man from outside the village, a white man, who had fallen in love with his daughter and wanted to marry her. The chief said, uh, well, I have the choice of who she marries at this age. And I say no, because you are 22 years old, and she is but 13. It just is not an even match. So when she turns 16, I will give her the choice, her choice to marry you. Well, the man said, well, I will wait. He waited till the girl had turned 16 and came back and proposed to the chief marriage to his daughter. The chief said, well, you're certainly determined enough. Let me ask her. And when the chief had asked his daughter if she liked the man and wanted to marry him, she said, absolutely not. This man has been watching me for years and he's creepy and I don't like him. So the chief told the man what she had said, that she, uh, not all that she she'd said, but enough to say that he did not give permission to marry her as there was still too much of a bridge in age and she wasn't ready to marry, according to her. Well, the man left very angry. Well, about a year later, the uh, girl disappeared and... Nobody saw her. They searched everywhere for her. Nobody saw her. And uh, finally, they, the white man's law brought the man to trial because the only the last person to see her alive was this man. They brought him to trial and gathered up the evidence. And when they brought him to trial, they did not have enough evidence to convict him. It just was not available even though he was the last one to see her alive. Well, anyway, to make a short story long, time passed on about six, eight months, and this man was drinking in a bar one night, very drunk, and one of this girl's cousins overheard the man talking to a friend and said, oh, she was very sweet, and she begged for her life. And as she still didn't want to marry me, I had to uh, cut her up and spread her all through the swamps in small pieces. Well, he was really kind of drunk and 
possibly just making the story up, but the young Indian brave went home and told the chief what he had heard. Well, it happens one night on a full moon. This man shows up in the back of a wagon, hogtied, and with him is the tribe healer, the medicine man. The medicine man is just talking to him. Now, he's gagged and tied, and he's in the back of a wagon, and a whole group of young Indians take him out of the wagon and put him into a long, flat bottom boat. Now, understand this is back in an era when there are no cars, and everything is horse-drawn, but there also is no boat motors. They're just, it's just simply rowboats at this time, and they lived amongst the islands. Well, this wagon pulls up to a cove, about 10 foot deep, in the St. Lawrence River, on a very, very calm, warm night. And the medicine man is with the gentleman that said that he had cut the chief's daughter up uh, because she wouldn't marry him. Well, the medicine man is going, now listen, you need to be very calm and you need to believe yourself that you did not do this because you have been tried by the white man's law and released for lack of evidence. Now, because you have made this statement about uh, killing her, you are going to be tried in the Indian law. And you need to be very, very calm and collected because if you are innocent, you will survive this. If you are not innocent, you may not survive. Well, this is the story of Lucky Stones. Now, I'm not sure whether you know what a Lucky Stone is. A Lucky Stone is a stone, usually small, could be big, but these are small. And it's um, got a perfectly round hole bored in the center of a stone. Now, this is a stone that was trapped on the bottom of the river for whatever reason, and the current over hundreds or thousands of years has bored a perfect hole in the stone. Now, you may think I'm kidding, but I've as much as been in England telling the same story, walking along the coast, and the people telling me, you know, Big House, you are so full of beans. There's no such thing as a lucky stone. Well, as fate would have it, about 10 minutes later, I stopped and pointed out a lucky stone on the shore of England. And that shore doesn't have much sand at all rocks. Anyway, we all just about fell over. It didn't seem possible, but there was a lucky stone. So, back to the story. These young braves showed up with buckets of lucky stones, just pails of them that had been collected over the years, over many, many years. And they put the gentleman into the flat-bottom boat. Now, this is about a 20-foot-long flat-bottom boat, so it's almost like, a, at that time, a work boat. It was so big. Several of the Indians climbed in the boat after him, and as the healer was singing Indian songs to soothe the man, the young braves tied these lucky stones to the gentleman, his fingers, his arms, around his neck, around his head. He is squirming and crying and screaming, and the healer all this time is telling him, please, just be very calm. If you are innocent with this test, you will walk straight out of this cove unharmed. These lucky stones will guide you out of them, and they will help you out of the cove. If you are uh, guilty, you will sink like a stone back to the place where they found the lucky stones. Well, they tied these all to the gentlemen, and I mean, I'm talking about several, almost a hundred, 